that woke you up this morning. It was the Lord, hallelujah, that kept you all down through this last week. All of your life, hallelujah. It was the Lord put the food on your table. It was the Lord that rocked you in the midnight hour. It was the Lord ah, that kept you from the assassin, from the bullets, from all the things that the enemy had even planned. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We come to adore you. We come to worship you. Lord, at this most magical, unexplainable time of the year. It's not comprehensible. We can't even put our thoughts and our mind and, and, and understand, but God, you do something at this time of the year that it's just a confirmation that, Lord, it's you, it's you that we adore. It's you hi, that do what we can't do even for ourselves. It's you, God, that is moving in our midst today. It's you that's keeping us even when we can't keep ourselves, it's you, Lord. Oh, God. We adore you. And we thank you. All the glory, it belongs to you, God. All the praise, all the credit, all the honor, it all belongs to you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you today for every person in this room today. Thank you, God. Bless everyone here. Let everyone today, God, uh, receive you today. Even now, God, more than ever before. Speak to your servant. I want to talk today for you. I want to speak on your behalf. Speak to me and tell me what to say. And I'll say it. And I promise you, I'll give you all the praise, all the credit all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody shout glory. Shout hallelujah. Shout thank you, Jesus. Woo. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel like praising him. Hallelujah. Well, I wish I had some help way in the back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I tell you what, I'm not limited because I brought my own praise. What about you? Hallelujah. Got my own feet. Hallelujah. So we thank God today. We thank God for everyone here and is there anybody here for the first time? You've never been here on a Sunday morning? Just stand where you are. We're going to just recognize you and honor you today. Has everybody been here before? God bless you. Come on, let's thank God for this young man right here. God bless you today. You are welcome. Amen. God is good. Thank you, God. Uh, I told Sister Clark over at the abandoned location, I don't know how many subjects I put on this message but I had so much thought it just kept developing amen come on pull it up uh, God is good amen we're going thank God for everybody here come on let's thank God for our first lady today praise the Lord amen God is good thank God for everybody elders ministers today everybody God bless you on today faith in your prayers must be in God's words. In other words, you got to have faith in God's word. Amen? If you don't have faith in God's word, then you don't have faith in God. You say you believe in God. The only way to believe in God, you got to believe his word. Amen? Okay. Dig it loud. You got five dollars? Come on. Come on. Bring your five dollars. Thank you, Jesus.
put up all that other money. Now I want you to, I want you to hold it up so everybody can see it. He's got five dollars. Everybody see it? Okay. Now I want you to repeat what I say to you. Pastor, give me five dollars. Pastor, give me five dollars. Pastor, I need five dollars. Pastor, I need five dollars. Pastor, please give me five dollars. Would you please give me five dollars? We keep asking God for what we already got. We keep asking God for what we already got. Come on, somebody say, I got five dollars. In other words, somebody say, I got faith, but I got to spend it. Uh-oh. What good is it to have faith if you won't spend it? Because all of you were looking at Deacon Lyle like, you know, something wrong with him for asking for five dollars when he has five dollars. And we keep asking God to give us what we already got. But the issue is that it's not that we don't have it. We don't believe we have it. So what good is it to have God's word and you don't believe you got it? What does his word say? His word says you're healed. Why do you keep saying, God, I wish you healed me instead of God, thank you for healing me. Because you got to spend what he already gave you. Everybody in this room, he's given faith. And faith is the currency of heaven. And if you don't spend your faith, your currency, it's not God's fault. Tell your neighbor, spend what he gave you. Spend it. Spend your faith. If you need healing, God said, I've already given you healing. I've already given you miracles. Come on, somebody. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but it's time for us to quit asking God for what we already got. I don't know about y'all today, but I live my life in expectation. Why am I always expecting God to bless me? Because I read the Bible and the Lord already said, I've already blessed you. And since he's already blessed me, my expectation is to get the blessing. How many want the blessing on today? Come on then, spend it. Come on and say, God, I thank you for blessing me. My expectation is I'm expecting to be healed whenever pain show up. Because I have been given the faith for the pain that's in my body to have to leave my body. But if I keep saying, God, I need you to heal me, it's just like keep asking for $5 and you got it. Some of y'all getting quiet now because y'all say, well, that, that, that's true, but that ain't true. Yes, it is true. It's true. We are not using what he gave us. And if you use what he gave you, you're going to see what he gave you. Did y'all catch that? If you use what he gave you, you're going to see what he gave you. But if you don't believe he gave it to you, you won't use it. Faith has to be used. How many of you know $5 in your pocket and you hungry, but you won't pull the five out and use it? It's not God's fault. And anybody around you is eating and you looking at them like, I want to eat too. And you say, well, take your $5 out and buy you something. No, no, I don't have $5. Sounds crazy, don't it? But that's what's going on spiritually. Everyone in this room that's still begging God for $5 after he didn't gave you $5 is absolutely not allowing God to manifest what he gave you. Faith is a tool. If you don't use it, it's not God's fault that you don't use it. 
He said, I've given every man a certain measure. Now, I want y'all to just get this clear. He would not have given you a, a measure of faith that's not adequate for what you need. So don't let the devil tell you, well, God gave me faith, but not enough. And you keep asking for five, and God said, I'm going to give you exactly what you asked for. I'm going to give you that five. Then you standing around talking about, I sure need five. Amen. Come on, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but today I'm expecting a blessing. I'm not, I'm not expecting one tomorrow. I'm expecting one today. Because I got five right now. And I'm spending it right now. I'm expecting a blessing today. Because I got five today. So if you believe you're going to get blessed tomorrow, then that means you don't believe you got five today. You can't keep talking about God bless me when God said, I have blessed you. I mean, y'all was looking at Deacon Law like, that, that ain't smart. <laughs> Asking you for $5 and he holding the five up so everybody can see it. It's the same way spiritually. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but when pain hit my body, I expect it to go. I'm not telling you I haven't taken a Tylenol or some other kind of pain, but I'm telling you I'm not jumping on Tylenol first. I'm jumping on the word of God first. I'm expecting this pain. Come on, somebody. Because I believe that I believe that God has healed me. I don't know about y'all, but I'm expecting Cameron Stewart to say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord. And I'm expecting my grandson to confess Christ. I don't care how he may be resisting. My faith is I'm expecting Cameron to say, Papa, I gave my life to Christ. Why? Because my expectation is based on that $5 faith. I don't know about y'all, but I was not expecting this place to stay tore up. I was expecting it to be just what we're looking at today. I kept on believing that some way, somehow, the Lord will make a way. Come on, we got to go down this road quickly. I mean, this is a teaching message, and I didn't teach it too good in, in the champagne, but I'm going to try to teach it. Over here, amen? Since I already went through and rehearsed one time, Brother Gibson, maybe I can do better this time. But I'm going to need y'all not to hold me up. I'm going to need y'all to let me get through the message because y'all always holding me up because I'll be trying to teach and people be talking. Everybody can read, read. For verily I say unto you that whatsoever... Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thy cast into the sea and shall not what? Doubt in his heart, but shall what? Believe those things, that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Tell your neighbor, watch your mouth. Tell your other neighbor, I said, watch your mouth. Somebody said, because of whatever you say. That's what you're going to get. Well, it's December and I always get a cold in the winter. You're going to get it too. You're going to get it. Every time you say, oh, my money's funny, your money going to stay funny. Every time you say, you know what? Life is really hard for me. It's going to keep being hard. Everything you say. Now check this out on top of what you say. The danger is you believe what you say. Uh-oh. It's the danger of saying something and you believe it in your heart. So what is happening to the people of God all over the world? We are saying the wrong things and faith is connected to what we say. Come on, somebody say flip it. I'm going to say that I'm a millionaire. I'm going to say I'm healed. Come on, somebody say, I'm going to say today, today I got blessings coming. Today, right now, today, blessings are coming. Today, favor 
it's coming and I believe it in my heart. I don't know about y'all, but I'm expecting blessings every day. I'm expecting the favor of God every day. I'm expecting for God to show up and show out. I believe it by faith. I'm expecting, oh my God, some good news over my phone. I'm expecting, come on somebody. Whatsoever a man believes, Whatsoever a man say and believe the very words that he say. Whew. Come on, new life. Somebody say, spend your five dollars. You got it. Just like Deacon Lau, you got it. Quit asking God. God, I need you to heal me. And God said, would you spend your $5? Y'all check it out. Now check it out. Don't be offended. Lord, heal me. Says what? I'm not healed. You still waiting on $5 that you got. Lord, please give me $5. Lord, please save my child. Lord, please heal my body. Lord, please make a way for me. And God said, I've already healed your body and I've already saved your child and, and I already have put money in your pocket. Tell your neighbor, it's already done. Check this out, somebody said, when he started you, he finished you before he started you. I don't know of any pregnant women in this room, but it's months before the news get out to everybody else what God started. About that fourth, fifth month, everybody starts saying, wait a minute. I... But long before you ever see it, God already finished it. Somebody say, everything is in there from the very beginning. You can't see it, but it's all there. The arms are there. The brain is there. The eyes are there. Come on, somebody. The kidneys are there. The liver is there. Somebody say this right now. I've already got my healing. It's already there. I've already got my money. It's all already there. God's already saved my children. I can't see it but God said it's already done before you ever see it. Somebody say I got the five dollars. I got the I got the five dollars. I'm not going to be asking people for what I already got. Because then none of y'all jump up to give him five dollars. You're like really? Looking right at the five dollars. And your house will turn some milk for five dollars. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you some prayer, cause <laughs> Come on, y'all, we gotta get down this road. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's go on. And he said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. I don't know about y'all. I don't really pray to be entertaining people. I'm really not trying to outpray you so you can say, oh, he can really pray. No, I believe when I'm praying, I receive what I pray. And even if my diction isn't perfect and even if I don't have all the syllables in the right place and, and I may not know what you know, but I know when I'm praying, I'm believing that the God that I pray it to is the God that answers my prayer. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like shouting. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's get some more. We got to go. Got to go. Come on. Give me another one. Hebrews 4 and 1 said, let us, everybody reading, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into the rest of um, any, <laughs> boy, I'm messing up. I'm trying to read. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Tell your neighbor, if you're up all night, it's because you're not in rest. See, if you worry, that means you don't believe you got five dollars. Even though you got it, you, you up all night worrying about $5 that you already got. 
Jesus was in the bottom of the ship asleep. Where? In the storm. The rest is the confirmation that you believe that you got what you have need of and that's why you resting. This ain't to put nobody down. I'm just trying to let the Lord have his way that he can touch somebody that you'll go to sleep tonight. I just believe God is watching over me and my family. How many of y'all believe he's watching over you and your family? Then go to rest. I don't care about how much shooting is going on. My faith says God is protecting me and mine. Okay, how many ambulances run up and down the street? I just believe God is keeping us healed and God is keeping us healthy. Come on, somebody. I believe it and so I'm resting. There's a rest. Come on, let's read it. What does it say? Come on, give me another one. Come on, what does it say? For unto us was the gospel priest as well as unto them, but the word priest did not profit them, not being what? In them that heard it. Tell your neighbor, quit hearing without receiving. Lord told me quit stressing about preaching because he said, you, they, they didn't hear you last week. You, you know, people are talking about, they ain't getting nothing. No, they're not getting nothing because they don't want to get nothing. You can't get a more simple preacher than this one right here. Don't know but two or three words. So you ain't going to get. Emancipation and proclamation. That don't go in there. But I'll say it. Just because it's a few words that I know. But the truth of the matter. What good is it for you to hear and not receive? What good is it for God to give you five dollars but you won't spend it? Why sit in church all your life and then God tell you the truth and you don't receive it? Come on, we got to go. Come on, come on, come on. He says what? Everybody read. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were when? Finished when? I told y'all he finished when he started you. Tell your neighbor he already got me covered. Come on, shout in this place. Somebody say, God already knew I was going to need healing, so he put healing inside of me. God already knew that I needed money, so he put money inside of me. God already, God, God already knew that I was going to need some joy, so he put some joy in me. God knew I was going to need some peace, and he put some peace in me. God knew you were going to need a Cali. Hey, and he gave you a Cali, and he knew Cali was going to need a daddy. Come on, somebody. He knew. You, hey, 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 hey. This is not a, mm, this is not a deal where God gets you here and then try to figure out what to do with you. God finished you, then he started you. Shout glory. When you need comfort, say, Lord, thank you. That you have provided me with the comfort when I have to go. Did he comfort you, Sister Tamara? He comforted us. He don't get you or allow you to be in a storm and then say, I forgot to provide him with comfort. That couldn't be right. He said, you never see the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. Why is that? Because God put the bread in you before you ever knew you had. Hey, 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 hey. That Shumanite woman didn't even know when Elijah came to her and he said, woman, what you got? She said, I ain't got nothing but this little meal and this little oil. And somebody say, the little bit you got. Somebody help me preach. Somebody said, the little bit you got. Is all you need. Because God will take the little bit. Boom. And the Bible said entire famine, the oil, the bread never ran out. Quit looking at the little bit. Y'all hear me say it all the time. The whole apple tree is in the apple seed. You can't see the whole apple tree, but somebody say it's hid, but it's there. Tell your neighbor your healing is here, but it's there. Come on, come on, come on. God say, I got that car. You can't see it, but I got it. That house, I got it. I got that husband. I got that wife. I got them babies. Come on, somebody. But you got to mix your words with faith. One of the hardest.
hardest thing for us to do is to say what God say. Well, I feel, shut your feelings down. You better shut your feelings down. The devil is a master at making you feel sick. He's a master at telling you, you ain't going to be healed. He's a liar. When you get up in the morning, he already lying. How many ever went to bed and he'll get in your dreams and lie to you? And you'll be like, what's going on here? The devil said, I will come to you and I'll do everything I can to make you not to believe God's word. Somebody say, back up here, back up here. Tell you, tell come on, somebody say, resist every word. I've been saying this lately, 54 and 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in the very mouth that rises up against me in judgment. I condemn it because it is the inheritance of the saints. In other words, I don't give you permission to speak a lie over my life. That's my right, that you cannot speak a lie over my life. You don't just get to freely run me down and condemn me. I don't give you permission to speak a judgment over my life. Come on, somebody. Say, I got my $5 and I'm using it. And don't get mad when I use mine when you just walk around with yours but won't use it. Only way you can be jealous is you not using yours. When I seen beautiful churches and beautiful sanctuaries, I didn't get jealous. I just started using my five dollars. Said, Father, you gave Fred Price one. You gave Big T D Jakes one. Get 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 ready. Hey, God, Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, jealous folks are folks who don't live in faith. Anytime you got to come against your brother and sister because they have a few material things that you don't have, it's only because you won't spend your five dollars. We got to go. We got to go. Come on, real quick. Look what he say. He said, "For what he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works." Whew, I like this. I like this. If God had to rest. Amen. I thank God for a wife. She helps me to rest. She said, sit down, huh? Sit down. I did it a couple weeks ago. She was so happy. I had, I had a lot on my schedule, but, I, you know, I, I go like it's a job, but I'm volunteering most of the time. And so I didn't go to the nursing home. I just said, I'm going to take two hours. And, just, and she was like, I noticed that about you today. That you actually sit down. Tell your neighbor, God rested. You got a right to rest. You got a right. Now, I ain't got this strong yet, but one day I'm going to turn my phone off for two hours. (laughs) Thursday night is date night. I'm in trouble most of the time because... I'm supposed to be, yeah, Sister Miller, you look so good to me. Rain, just a minute. <laughs> What's going on now? She's like, this is pitiful. This is not a date. <laughs> and if I ain't careful, I ask her to read it for me and text something for, him, for me. I'm not your secretary, but I'm going to need you to be right now. Come on, somebody. Come on, get the next verse, really. Come on, look what it say. He says, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. And I'm not just talking about physical rest. Somebody said mental rest. How many know a lot of folks can't sleep at night because their mind is running wide open? And most of it is the devil talking crazy to you. And you are his audience listening to him. You right, devil. Oh, no, devil, don't do that. Oh, please, I hope this don't happen. What else you said you going to do? Lord, you mean. Ooh. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Keep going. Seeing, therefore, it remaineth the same, must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of what? 
Tell your neighbor, if you don't use your $5, it's just like you don't have $5 and it's sad for you to be hungry when you got $5. Because you don't believe it. You don't believe it. How many of y'all can testify that the Lord brought you through some things? Come on, shout glory. How many can testify that the Lord has brought you through some previous trials? Now, how much sense does it make for God to bring you through that for him to fail you in this? It's only because you won't go back and pull out your diary of testimonies of what he done for you. You better go back in your archives and say, I remember when I was sick and the Lord healed me. I remember when I was hungry and the Lord fed me. Come on, somebody. I remember when I walked out of the car wreck and no bones were broken. Come on, somebody. I remember when I had a broke down car and a broke down house. Come on, somebody. I had a broke down life, but the Lord. Unbelief will stop your miracle. But the saddest thing about it is you got what you need and you don't believe it. You got it. We got it. Oh, I'm telling y'all, this is a, a really good message, but I am not in any way uh, in the message trying to ignore the fact how the devil don't play fair. I'm just trying to get you today to grab a hold of some more faith that you already got so you can get through the latest test and trial. That's all God wants you to do. He wants you to walk in victory this week. Come on, somebody. So resist the devil this week. Come on, somebody. Say, talk back to him. Come on, come on, somebody. I want y'all to do this very, very firmly. Shut up, Satan. Shut your mouth. I don't give you permission to talk to me. I don't know. I heard somebody said the other day, just because you messing with me, I'm going to go ahead and give God about a thousand hallelujahs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I guarantee you, when you go to praising him, he'll leave you alone. I guarantee you, when you begin to say, Hey, he'll begin to run. He's like, oh, no, 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 stop that. No, just for that, about a hundred Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm going to count them off. Hey, the Bible said he's tormented at the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on, we got to go. Come on, keep going. Again, he limited, what is that? He limited a certain day saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, what? Now, this is needing for a pause. Why is it after God tell us he got us, we get mad and harden our heart? After God gives us a guarantee, I got you. Mm -mm, no, you don't. No, you don't. Okay. The day, somebody right now in this room, today is the day for you to hear God talking to you. Today is the day for you to throw up your hand and say, yes, Lord. The day is the day that I receive what God has promised me. I'm telling y'all, I'm not just telling y'all this is a nice message. Somebody in this room today can get healed. It can manifest today. You don't have to wait till next Sunday. It can manifest today. If you just now don't harden your heart and just believe. Somebody says, spend your $5. Come on, we got to go. Come on, real quick. Thank you, God. He said, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? I don't care nothing about you talking about giving me $5 tomorrow. If I'm hungry today, I'm going to need five today. Why would God promise us something and then put it on delay? Somebody say he didn't. He gave you what you asked for when you asked it. You remember at the top of this message, he said at the time that you pray, believe that you receive it. 
So you get just what you ask for when you pray. At the time that you pray, God ain't going to say, hold up and suffer a while longer. And then after you suffer a while, then I'll bless you. That's that man-made theology. That's Satan lying to you. God ain't getting no glory out of you being sick. You being broke. You being mad, being, you know, uh, uh, toe up from the floor up. No, God ain't, the devil's the only one people say, oh, don't she look bad? They don't say, Lord, that's a blessing how you whooping on her. None of people be talking about you. You broke, say, they broke? <laughs> God ain't getting no glory. Are you and your, your companion fighting all the time? There ain't no glory in that. We, we got to grow. Yeah, you could have grown three or four years ago if you had heard what God said. With love and kindness have I drawn thee. No, no, I ain't cooking nothing. No, that ain't how you winning. Go on in there, cook for Bubba, even though he ain't got nothing coming. You're breaking. What? She cooked. Oh, God, I love it, her. <laughs> what? You mean to tell me he left the black card on the dresser before he left? Some of y'all don't understand what that black card is. That, that black card is you can get anything. That's the kind of uh, charge card you want to leave if, if you want to win her. Amen. You don't care nothing about no flowers, but if you want to win her, you better buy some. Oh, I know he 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 got canchy don't you hair, but you ought to comb it sometime just because he'd be like, girl, you you mean you're gonna try to comb this? Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. I building my muscles today. Look at here. Hey man. Come on, somebody say I got the five dollars. Which means I got what I need for the mission that I'm on. Shout glory. glory. Come on, real quick. Come on, come on, come on. There remain it therefore what? There remain it therefore what? Yeah. To who? We don't have no business running around looking depressed. I don't want nobody to be offended. If you're under the attack of depression, you need to break that demon. I read somewhere it says, look, you got to leap for joy. I mean, somebody said, you got to make yourself turn on some worship music. You don't want, you got to turn, you got to make yourself get out of that bed and open the blinds. You, you actually have to make yourself turn on Benny Hinn instead of turn on those stories all about killing and, 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 and how they raped and how they, no, you're going to get more depressed. You got to turn on that stuff to say, look what God, turn on Sid Roth. Supernatural channel. Just listen to some of them testimonies. Yeah. Hey Amen. You got to get your old stinking self up and go take a bath. <laughs> Somebody say, force yourself into a shower. <laughs> You're going to feel better when you start smelling that it's not... Nothing in the house stinking but you. You're like, I kept wondering what was stinking around. Yeah. <laughs> How many you know when people are in the state of depression, they don't want to do nothing? And you got to force yourself. Force yourself to go to Red Lobster by yourself. So I ain't got nobody to eat with me today. And I called my girl, I called my guy, didn't nobody. Go on by yourself. And be right in Red Lobster talking to yourself. And everybody like he's cray cray. <laughs> I am having a great time with me today. Thank you for some meat. Somebody said, pull your mirror out and say, you sure look good. <laughs> Woo, these folks have messed up not even coming to dinner with us today. <laughs> Amen. Go on a shopping spree for yourself. Where? To Dollar General. You got five dollars. Hey! Say, boy, I'm gonna spend that five. 
Somebody said, I'm going to take my time because I, I just got the five, so I got to make sure I shop wise. They got the clearance rack in Dollar General. Let me go check it out. Let me check. The clearance Hey Amen. Somebody say, and somebody say, I'm expecting to get a deal. I'm expecting to get a blessing. Hallelujah. Anybody expecting a blessing today? Shout glory. Come on, somebody release faith right now. Say, God, I thank you for blessing me with a blessing today that I don't have room enough to receive. Huh, I don't know about you. I don't just want a regular blessing. I want that one that I ain't got room enough to receive. Exceedingly abundantly above what I could ask to think. Whew. Come on, let's finish. We got to finish. There, therefore, somebody say rest this week. When the devil start talking crazy to you, relax. Somebody say way maker. Miracle worker, promise. Somebody said, turn that on this week. When the devil talking to you, turn that on. Run that till you believe it. Run it till you believe it. Sit in there and fuss with your wife and husband all week. Turn on something positive. Don't be in there just wearing people out because you ain't got no rest. You snoring? Yes, I'm snoring. I was till you hit me in the side. And I think you hit me hard on purpose. Yeah. I mean, a lot of folks don't like it when you at rest. I don't know about y'all, but I live a wonderful life, me and Sister Miller. And we be hiding from people. <laughs> y'all never see our car in the driveway because we don't want you to know we home. Uh-uh. Summertime, I wash my car in the driveway, but a lot of times, I can't get it washed. Hey, hey. How you doing? I was doing fine until you just pulled up to tell me 10,000 things wrong with you. Come on, y'all. How many of y'all got family members that they know you, you, you got rest? And then they call you for money. What? Keep talking about, I know y'all got three bedrooms in there. We're going to, so what? You ain't sleeping in none of them. I mean, I got to move us on. But isn't it amazing how you try to help people and then they're going to tell you how after you help them what they ain't going to do in your house. Excuse me, wait a minute. They 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 gonna come in your house when they get they gonna just somebody said they'll try to mess with your peace they'll try to mess with your rest cause they don't have none one or two o'clock in the morning and they in there with the music turned up you better go to bed you 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 better go somewhere I don't care where you Amen. You at rest. You at peace. I'm going to have some of these mothers in this room because fathers, we don't have the patience to deal with the cray cray. But a lot of you mothers don't have to take that abuse off y'all children. So call my name one more time today. I'm going to put you on the street. I'm talking about a two year old. Get out. <laughs> mama, mama, mama. Say it one more time. <laughs> Amen. You resting. Here they come crawling up to your bed, pulling on your cover. <laughs> what do you want? Nothing. <laughs> we got to finish. 4 and 10, 4 and 11 now, let's see. Is that the right one? For he that entered into the rest of, he also have ceased from what? His own works as God did from his. Tell your neighbor, you quit trying to do it yourself. How many of y'all can testify, you always trying to help God? I've been there, I'm trying to help God. Guys, I don't need your help. I need you to just sit down and chill. God got this. You can't counsel God. You can't help God. You can't do nothing for God. All you can do is trust God. Come on, let's finish. 
Let us labor, therefore, to enter into what? That rest, least what? Any man fall after the same example of what? Somebody say unbelief will make you fall. Can, I, can anybody testify that before you got saved, it's because of your rebellion, your unbelief that got you in trouble? I'm going to finish, but I'm going to tell y'all this. I want us, Deacon Lyle, to start. I don't know when, but we got to go out and win people for Christ. We got to do that more than we've ever done. Because you never get fish to jump out of the water. You got to catch them. The natural, God gave the illustration. He said, make you fishers of men. Well, if you know anything about fishing, how many know you got to bait them up? You got people that really are just like uh, Elder Claudie Cowan. He know how to get a cat daddy out of that water. He just has that anointing to get fish out of water. Well, God said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And some folks, they got some dough they put on that, that little hook. Some of them got them little yellow, little blue, little green, little rubber. Uh, uh, they stick on the end of it. They got all kind of little tricks because they trying to what? Catch the fish. We, the church, have to get smarter than the devil. If we're going to catch some people, we got to be smarter. And this is the number one thing. I'm telling y'all, we're going to work on it, but this is the number one thing. When you go out to witness, you must first throw yourself under the bus. I'm only here because I didn't die in my crazy. So I'm inviting you to church today because I was this way and I was this way and I smoked and I drank and I fornicated. You don't go witnessing and try to act like you're superior to the people you're witnessing to. Y'all ain't going to say nothing now. The witnessing team just got smaller because most folks want to go out witnessing from a self-righteous position. Girl, I'm telling you, God, I'll take care of you because when I was out there and I had these six babies, God, or this one baby, whatever, you hear me? When I was in prison, God brought me. Come on. When I went through a divorce, God made a way for me to raise my babies. You see me roll up in this nice car, but let me tell you how many bus tickets I went through first. It cannot win people to Christ if you think you are superior to them. Keep telling us we got to be nice to people. We got to be nice. We got to be kind. You're the meanest person on your job and then you want to invite people to church. They're not coming to church with you and working with you with your mean self all week. You think I'm going to go to church now with you? Amen. How many people don't go to new life because you go? Uh-oh, y'all quiet now. Some of y'all ain't been in my office because usually if you're in my office, you're in trouble. So most of y'all ain't been in my office. But in my office, I got a t-shirt that says the no-name church. I belong to the no-name church. And this t-shirt is for people in the ministry that go to new life, that I don't give you permission to tell people you go here. <laughs> and you just tell them, why you got that t-shirt on? Because my pastor don't want me to tell you where I go to church at. Why is that? Just wait a few minutes, you'll see why he don't want me. <laughs> When I go to cussing and smoking and drinking and Amen. You can't be the doorkeeper at the club and the doorkeeper at the church. Then they, they come in on Sunday morning and say, didn't you open the door for me at the club last night? Yes. <laughs> Amen. You cannot be, oh my God, the one drunk on the bar stool and sitting on top of the bar and, and you karaoke and, and then Sunday morning they get to the church and there you are in the choir. <laughs> Wasn't that true at the bar last night? <laughs> uh -uh. Everybody welcome in new life. But you ready for leadership, you're going to have to give up some cray cray. Everybody welcome, but when you're ready for leadership, you got to put away immaturity. 
got to put away things in this world that you love that is causing to be an embarrassment to the kingdom of God. I'm still preaching good. Y'all just got low with me, but I'm, I'm still preaching good. You got to know that God is still requiring all of us to honor him outside that wall. This week, I need uh, God need everybody to go out that door this week and win some people to Christ just by your personal life. You can't ask your kids to lie for you all week and then come in here on Sunday talking about I've been saved all my week. And your kids say, but didn't you just tell me mama to lie to them bill collectors when you were sitting in the room you told me to tell them you ain't home. Daddy, didn't you, did, didn't you hit mama on the backside of her head when she wasn't watching her? You in there talking about you holy. I'm a holy man. No, daddy, you are an abuser. You're domestic violence. I'm using a little humor, but how many know this is serious? You can't win nobody to Christ unless you walk it out yourself. Then you got to share your story. How many come to church because you need to be here? I don't know about y'all. I'm here every week. Uh, Lord, give me breath. I ain't out of town. I'm here. I'm not sitting at home chilling. We got to get up and come and worship the God that kept us another week. Come on, rest on your feet. I don't know if I got to the 11th verse in Champagne or not, but I did pretty good over here. Y'all Y'all didn't bother me too much. Amen. But it's some more. They'll put them up. There's some more scripture you should study this week. Come on, ministers. Come on. Hallelujah. Who in this room? is going to spend your $5 right now. Who is going to...